So let's begin. First, I'll talk about the mystery of a Briya and Ghibli. Here is a concept art of a Briya, where Chihiro gets sent to, or works at. It looks like a magnificent Japanese-style architecture. However, if you look closely, this lower half is made of concrete. The upper half looks gorgeous, but the only part that's gorgeous, well, how should I say? It's the penthouse of Yubaba, which looks so cool. This is like the captain's cabin of an old sailing ship or the one in space pirate Captain Harlock, where only the captain's cabin is gorgeously designed. This part looks so beautiful, but in fact, the place where the guests drink and play is limited to a very narrow space around here, and all other luxurious area are parts of Yubaba's penthouse. In the initial plan, do you see how there's something sticking out over here? It actually says toilet, and it's non-flush toilet. But having a toilet in this location and the poo or pee fall from here all the way down to the ground. Now, let's see how it looks like from the side. So, this is also an image board that Miyazaki drew in the early stage. As I mentioned earlier, this magnificent and cool-looking part is Yubaba's penthouse. But here, they say guest room. This is one of the first drawings that Miyazaki made. It doesn't have Yubaba's gorgeous penthouse yet. The lower half of the building is made of concrete, as I said before. Here's the main gate. Here you see the bathroom, which is an atrium. And there are guest rooms around it with the employees' dormitories at the back. The first half has the watcher's seat and the bathroom, the second floor is the atrium, the third and the fourth floors are guest rooms, and finally Yubaba's penthouse is on the fifth floor and up. Miyazaki calls this building quasi western style. It's a terminology of architecture and quasi means to simulate. What it means is that... Um, as you can see from the huge boiler house below, as I said earlier, this is made of concrete. In other words, it's not a Japanese-style architecture, but a fake version made of concrete. Any Japanese-style architecture that has adopted the technology of Western architecture is called quasi-Western style in architectural industry. Many of the buildings in this style were built during the Meiji era by the carpenters who weren't so sure about how to build so-called Western architecture. They imitated its appearance with the new materials and plans to make buildings that looked like Western buildings, but also couldn't help adding huge Japanese tiles on top. So that's how this style started. But this is Miyazaki's intensive message which tells us how this style also signifies the technology of Japanese animation, because Japanese animation is only an imitation of Western art form that Disney and others started, with an addition of superficial decoration in Japanese aesthetics. Miyazaki himself often says that all today's Japanese animation do is to decorate what the West has started with its own aesthetics. That's why it can be described as quasi-Western style. This building is actually a powerful irony towards Princess Mononoke, which is Miyazaki's his own work. No matter how all these domestic subjects during the Muromachi period and the Jomon period are portrayed, how the theory of cultural sphere marked by Laurel Forest is applied, how Japanese methodologies are pictured, animation is originally Western in terms of technology and film grammar. Miyazaki is pointing out how everything that he makes is merely quasi-Western style because of that. In other words, Abraya as well as Princess Mononoke, which is his previous work, signifies Studio Ghibli itself. The women who work there are the staff members of Ghibli during the production of Princess Mononoke. There were some troubles and many animators quit. Then the majority of the newcomers were females. 
At one point, people said, oh, there are only girls working for Ghibli, because they consisted mostly of new female employees. By collecting all those female animators, Yubaba, or the producer Suzuki, commanded that the next movie had to be a hit. Not only because Ghibli became so huge, but their another animation director, Isao Takahata, spent their money like water without doubting the expense. So they had to make anime that satisfied the audience's desires with these female animators, just like having female employees work in a quasi-Western style architecture to satisfy the desires of the customers. Abraya holds such a strong message, guests are gods, and Ghibli's mission is to make fun animation endlessly in order to please them. Miyazaki is trying to say that his job is exactly like the job of Abraya. In fact, one of the themes behind Spirited Away was criticism towards Ghibli, which was becoming greedier and greedier. It's also a criticism against Suzuki. Catch lines such as that Abraya is a whorehouse that critics would love to hear were created in order to create ambiguity so that critics won't know the real theme. Well, at that time, so, Miyazaki drew a concept art. Here's a god entering a braya, here's watcher's seat, and Yubaba sits in it. Then here the workers are washing away the dirt of the guests. Then those guests go home feeling good. This process is a metaphor for the people who visit the theater. The audience coming to the theaters live a stagnant daily life and builds up stress. It's commonly said that movies make them impressed, laugh, and shed tears so that they can go home feeling refreshed. That's how they earn money, and that's why a movie has to make a hit. It's also something that Suzuki always said, which Miyazaki agreed to, but at one point he couldn't take it anymore. Especially because Princess Mononoke made an unprecedented hit. Miyazaki, without knowing that, Spirited Away would make a bigger hit, <laughs> try to deliver a message through Spirited Away that because they made so much money, something has gone wrong. Then they made more money. <laughs> so, where did this idea that Spirited Away portrays the sex industry come from? Well, it came from the interview with the producer Suzuki. But Miyazaki is someone who doesn't make things he doesn't know about. He has made numerous comments on how the purpose of making Spirited Away was to depict Ghibli in a book called The Great Adventure of Spirited Away, published by a minor publisher called Fusion Product. Why in this book? It's because it's the only book that Suzuki doesn't censor. Miyazaki was pretty close to the president of the publisher. There are actually many books about the movie or Studio Ghibli. Any publisher can publish the book if they don't use any illustrations. But Suzuki only authorizes major publishers like Kaodansha, Kadokawa, and Bungei Shunju to publish so-called official books with lots of illustrations. And this publisher called Comic Box, uh, no, I mean, a uh, fusion product is not at all a leading publisher, but they could publish this book just because the president was a left wing and friends with Miyazaki. So this book is really like a miracle. So there's so many secret stories in this book, like Miyazaki complaining about Ghibli, staff bitching about Miyazaki, and Miyazaki's confessions on what he really wanted to do. So. Even Ghibli Museum doesn't sell this book, which makes this book unofficial because Suzuki hasn't authorized it. So, according to this book, the reason why all male workers are frogs is because at President Tokuma's funeral, there were many high-ranked people in suits, and they all looked like frogs to Miyazaki. He thought, oh, that's a frog called Prime Minister. Even the Prime Minister was at the funeral. 
Those executives who approached Ghibli to make money all looked like frogs. On the other hand, animators including Miyazaki himself are treated like insects with no respect. That's why the female workers are portrayed as slugs, because again, according to herbalism, slugs are also insects. Well, so are frogs, but anyway, that's the intention behind these character settings. Miyazaki mentions in the book I just showed you that animator's job is irrational and extremely hard. Miyazaki said he wanted to create a story where a small girl is forced to work at Ghibli. Chihiro is based on a real person, which is also on Wikipedia. Nihon Television is one of Ghibli's patrons, and there's an executive called Mr. Okuda. Now, Chihiro's model is his daughter. One day, Miyazaki suddenly started insisting that there's no way she would be raised properly under her parents. I mean, he really can't stay out of other family's business. He said that he needed to do something and suggested that if she came to Ghibli, she would become a more decent adult. Mr. Okuda took Miyazaki's daughter, uh, no, I mean, uh, Mr. Okuda took his daughter to Miyazaki's second home quite often. This was where the basic structure of Spirited Away was created. Just like those businessmen who approached Ghibli and Miyazaki shamelessly for money. Chihiro's parents turn into pigs for being tempted by food. And their daughter is taken to an unreasonable and horrifying workplace like Ghibli and forced to work there. Wikipedia also writes what happened. The original idea of the movie was that Miyazaki wanted to please a 10-year-old daughter of his personal friend. She was a daughter of Seiji Okuda, a Nihon TV's movie producer, and became the model of the main character Chihiro. At the time, Miyazaki used to invite the daughters of Ghibli officials in his mountain hut and held a training camp once a year. He had never made a movie targeted for girls around 10 years old, so he became motivated to make one. In other words, the concept of the movie in Abraya is that a girl who is forced to join Ghibli for the convenience of the adults is made an animator to make anime that comfort the audience. Isn't that terrible? This is the basis. But then Miyazaki keeps on including additional interesting elements the basic concept is like the part of a braya made in concrete. The anime transforms from the basic concept because he keeps wondering how he can make it more interesting. A girl he likes is being exploited by Suzuki at Ghibli, but there's nothing Miyazaki can do to help. He was like, I'm just an old man, which sounds pretty gross. He said, I'm just an old man, so I can't fight Suzuki who's as scary as Yubaba, but I can give her some advice. So he drew himself as Kamoji. He didn't forget to give himself a cool character. Actually, Chihiro gets stronger without any help, but Miyazaki had another alter ego besides Kamaji. It's Haku, that beautiful boy who is literally covered with blood in order to work for Yubaba. Just like that, Miyazaki had to work bloody hard in order to make anime under Suzuki's unreasonable command. And if Suzuki decides that Miyazaki was too old and useless, he would ruthlessly throw Miyazaki away in a hole and start favoring young animators like Miyazaki's disciples, his son Goro Miyazaki, and more than anyone else, Takahata. <laughs> Miyazaki is like Suzuki-san, so now you care more about the younger guys than me. Miyazaki's such selfish delusions overflow in the scenes where Yubaba dotes on a child called Bo, which makes the movie more and more interesting. But only Chihiro doesn't abandon Miyazaki or beautiful Haku and goes to meet Takahata at Zeniba at risk of her life. <laughs> and Chihiro finally tells Miyazaki her real name which is a metaphor for teaching him the kind of anime he should be making and leaves. And that anime is spirited away. In other words, this is Miyazaki's autobiographical story, which I think is so well made. 
It is an animation for Miyazaki, by Miyazaki, from the beginning to the end. At some point, it was no longer an anime for 10-year-old girls. Now he was making it for himself. On Your Mark, made around this time, was similar. From around this time, Miyazaki started making stories only he could understand. But that type of story created something sinister and deep in taste. On top of that, he still had a will to make his movies a hit. In addition, he had skills, experience, great ideas and imagination to make that happen. And this became the secret for the popularity of his movies. That's how the movie reflects his strong sense as an author. However, an anime Miyazaki would make for himself could not make a mega hit like Princess Mononoke did. It's like Miyazaki's autobiographical novel, but it lacks sociality. Unless it looks like it's criticizing society, critics won't pay close attention to the context. That's where Suzuki's misleading advertisement comes in. Suzuki knew at the early stage of production that Miyazaki started making an autobiography. Then he thought the movie wouldn't make a mega hit unless he made the movie look like Princess Mononoke, which criticized the society. That's why Suzuki intentionally misled the media by saying a briar is an analogy for sex establishment, like those Japanese hostess bars. His strategy worked so well, and the critics, including myself, were tricked by it. That's how we never got to the idea that the movie actually depicted Studio Ghibli. It's written in this book that Abraya is Ghibli and people lose their minds working there, just like how Chihiro eventually didn't feel anything seeing her parents turning into pigs. In the actual movie, there is a scene where Chihiro sees them and feels sad. But, uh, well, when this book was made, the movie was only halfway done. During the interview, Miyazaki said that Chihiro doesn't feel sad at all when she sees her parents as pigs because she loses her mind working in a braya. But when she eats rice bowls and remembers her name, she realizes how much she has changed, then finally shed tears. Just like that, people lose their minds as they work at a braya. It reflects the fact that um, Miyazaki was too busy when his mother died, so he didn't go to her funeral. He thought that people who work at an animation studio lose their minds more and more. Miyazaki fully understands it because he has given so many unreasonable orders and yelled at his Ghibli animators himself. As for Chihiro, she's so busy that she completely forgets her name and loses her mind. And the way for her to regain her mind... Uh, let me see, do I have it? It's the scene where he eats the rice ball. You see how she eats it, she's holding it with her both hands and eating it greedily. Actually, Chihiro doesn't have any desire in the first place. The reason why she's so skinny is because she doesn't have much appetite. When Chihiro's parents offer her food at that mysterious night market, she says, I don't want any. That's the usual Chihiro. She doesn't eat much during meals because she doesn't have the desire to. Even when people order her to eat, she just doesn't get hungry. But when Haku persuades her to eat and she eats the rice bowl for the first time, she realizes how hungry she has been all this time. It's that Chihiro acknowledges her desires and discovers her energy to live by eating the rice bowl really greedily, filling her mouth with the rice. So, I discussed uh, two topics simultaneously by mixing stories about Miyazaki, Ghibli, and the settings of Abraya. Uh, this is it for the mysteries of Abraya and Ghibli. So, that was the first topic today.